As 2014 comes to an end, we look back over an eventful year. The Scottish independence referendum was inevitably a focal point. However, throughout the year, we've discussed a range of topics and continued to engage with people from across Scotland and beyond. In 2014, the Chamber saw lively debates on key issues for the people of Scotland, including the independence referendum, the NHS, housing, child poverty, education and training, and climate change. Eleven new bills were introduced, and 18 bills were passed in 2014. Among these, the Marriage and Civil Partnership Scotland Bill and the Children and Young People Scotland Bill received widespread attention. There were changes in party leadership this year. Nicola Sturgeon, MSP, replaced Alex Salmond, MSP, as leader of the Scottish National Party and First Minister. Joanne Lamont, MSP, stood down as leader of Scottish Labour and was replaced in the Scottish Parliament by the new Deputy Scottish Labour leader, Kezia Dugdale, MSP. Our committees discussed a wide range of subjects, including food standards and human trafficking. They also visited local communities around Scotland to hear their views on issues affecting them. The Local Government and Regeneration Committee heard from people in Dumfries and Galloway on the Community Empowerment Scotland Bill, while the Devolution Further Powers Committee heard from 16 and 17 year olds about their experience of voting in the referendum. People from a variety of backgrounds appeared before committees. In March, young people who have been homeless talked to the Equal Opportunities Committee about preventing youth homelessness. The Public Petitions Committee considered 34 new petitions put forward by members of the public or organisations. This year, MSPs have welcomed more than 70 delegations, including the Speaker of the National Assembly of Malawi. In August, Nandi Mandela spoke at the International Culture Summit. In the days around the referendum in September, journalists and broadcasters from around the world took up residence in the media village in the Parliament grounds. Parliament Days provide opportunities for local people, schools and businesses to find out first-hand about our work. Dumbarton, Fort William and Leavenmouth were the venues this year. Meanwhile, at Holyrood, we welcomed more than 300,000 visitors, with more than 17,500 people going on guided tours. In August, the Festival of Politics saw people discussing the big topics and concerns of the day. Our festival Café Bar offered a chance to carry on the discussions in a relaxed atmosphere. To celebrate our 15th anniversary and the return of the Great Tapestry of Scotland exhibition, people were offered the chance to stitch their way into history by contributing to the People's Panel. We hosted events with participants of all ages and backgrounds, including primary school teams competing in the EuroQuiz final, higher English students attending the Language in Parliament Day, and delegates at the Scottish Older People's Assembly. In a number of ways, the Parliament continues to place a high priority on engagement with the people of Scotland, both by going out to different regions and by encouraging the people to visit and participate. We hope you enjoyed this quick look back at 2014 and will join us in shaping the politics of 2015. <laughs>